defense diplomacy in action. The head of the Afghan army is just the kind of man these firms want to talk to. It may not look like it, but times are actually quite tough for the armoured vehicles industry. A couple of years ago, an event like this would have been chock full of niche suppliers trying to sell niche solutions to problems in Afghanistan. But the drawdown of operations there means there are no more urgent operational requirements. Add to that sequestration in the United States, a uh, lot of money, 47% reduction in the money that's available for procuring equipment in the US, which is a big driver for the industry's point of view. All of those effects mean that this entity, this industry, this community of interest needs to sort of resize, adjust to a changed environment. So we are still supplying some innovative equipment into Afghanistan, so it's not all completely over, but indeed as far as commissioning new uh, equipment is concerned, we're going to move towards a contingent posture and that will have consequences for the uh, delivery timetables, the kinds of equipment that we're looking for. The war in Afghanistan will leave a lasting legacy on British Army equipment and that's not seen by all as a good thing. Uh, yes, I'm worried. I'm sure the Army is slightly worried. But the reality is we don't have an endless pot of gold. Um, and it is, at least in plan terms, not forever. There are replacement vehicle programmes with the Scout and the Warrior Capability Sustainment Programme. Uh, the Minister today stressed, you know, this is going to happen. And um, the UOR vehicles, the Mastiffs, Warthogs, Ridgebacks, etc., they're a temporary issue, I think. Let's hope they are. The minister, though, insists the vehicles are up to the job. They are being adapted. They're being adapted so, for example, they can be driven on UK roads, the wheel vehicles, uh, that is. And uh, uh, they will form part of the next sort of decade or so of uh, training and, and capability for deployment if that's required. But we're looking now sort of beyond that to the kind of a capability upgrades that we will need uh, to cope with the threats of the future. There is still a market for new, expensive armoured vehicles, but there's no way that this is a growth industry right now. Will Inglis, Forces News, Farnborough.